Hello everybody, I'm Colin Maldry, I'm a consultant at Semaku and uh, I will show you uh, some tricks that I've used in the development of the Data to RDF plugin, uh, a plugin for the Dependent Toolkit. These tricks are used for the development in with XSLT and Ant. Um, in this case, I show them how they apply with used uh, with the use of the Dependent Toolkit. But even if you don't use the Dependent Toolkit, they are also very useful. So. The first trick is uh, XSLT tunnels. It's a feature that appeared in uh, the version 2.0 of XSLT and that really can uh, made make the management of your parameters uh, much easier. So in this example, uh, we have two files, map.xml and topic.xml. So map.xml has a root element called map with uh, language declared uh, and topic ref child element. This topic ref has a attribute href with the path to topic.xml. Topic.xml has a root element with a language, then a child element section, which itself has a child image. So what we want to do uh, with these files is that every time we process the image element, we want to also have access to a parameter that, uh, that stores the current language. The current language can come from two places either from the topic language or from the map. The problem is that um, at the topic level, this language is sometimes declared, sometimes not. So when it's not declared and on the topic, we should be able to access the value from the map. Okay. Well, of course, we would use a parameter in that case because we, when we are processing the topic, we don't know from which map uh, we come from. So the parameter should be passed during the processing. Um, so here is how it would be done without tunnels. So for example, if you are bound to use XSLT 1.0 or if you don't know about tunnels. Um, so the first, um, so basically each uh, green uh, rectangle is the, a template for an element. And between each we would need to, between each template we would need to declare the parameter uh, language and uh, pass it to the next template all the time. So, for example, for section, it would be quite redundant and verbose, unnecessarily unnecessarily verbose because section doesn't need the language element, uh, the language parameter for its processing. But in this case, you would need to declare it and pass it so that image has access to it. I will show you what it, how it looks like in code. So we would have the topic ref template that would de uh, declare a map language variable with the value of the language for the map. This variable would be used to pass the, this uh, language parameter to the next template. Then in the topic template, it would check whether uh, XMLang is declared or not. So for example, if XMLang is not empty, then we will use it, otherwise we use the value of the language parameter that comes from the map and we pass it to the next template. In the section we would do we would need to declare the language parameter just because we need to pass it to the next template image. Even if the, in the section processing we don't need language. And finally the main in image we would have the parameter language which would come from a section we would use it and in case we need it for the next elements we would pass it. Uh, as you can see this uh, uh, this way of working is quite verbose because even in sec in templates where we don't need the parameter we need to declare it uh, just in order to pass it to the next template. Uh, and on top of this here we we have a quite very, si very simple use case but imagine if we have like 20 or 30 templates and very various ways to go from the map to the image element. Uh, we would need to be sure at all levels, at in all templates, that uh, the language parameter is always available and always passed so that it reaches image. So very verbose and not convenient. So I will show you how it would be done with templates, with uh, tunnels. So here is a uh, how it looks like. So. Um, we would still have 
the creation of a parameter in the topic ref template. But this time we would use the we would add in the with param element the tunnel attribute with the value yes, which would mean that we push the parameter to a sort of tunnel uh, that is available to all the further templates that are processed either via apply templates or by call template for with the name template. Um, so in our with our use case in topic we would uh, check whether XML link is available or not in the topic and we would replace the parameter that's in the tunnel the language parameter uh, with the new value in section we wouldn't do anything special because we don't need the language parameter so we would simply not declare it and finally in image we would retrieve it from the tunnel so I will show you how it looks like in code so for topic ref is not very different we still uh, declare a variable and pass it as a parameter to the next template except that this time we have the tunnel attribute to specify that we want this parameter to be able not only in the next te template but also all the following templates uh, that follow yeah so um, if they are called with apply templates like here apply template or call template with a name template in topic, also quite similar to the previous case, we still check if XMLN is declared or not. Um, what's interesting is that to retrieve the parameter from the template, we use the attribute tunnel yes again when declaring the parameter for the template. It means that we are taking it on from the tunnel and not from only the previous template. Again, we uh, apply templates and uh, this time we also put tunnel to be sure that it's available to the next ones. Here it becomes interesting because in section we don't need the language parameter, thus we simply don't declare it at all. And we apply template again. So by applying templates again and not, for example, doing a for each or uh, stopping here, um, it could also work with call template. By doing this, we are sh we make sure that we continue the tunnel and the parameter is still available for the image template. So here again we retrieve it with tunnel, we do the processing we need to do and we apply templates again and the language parameter is still available for the further templates uh, in case they need it. So as you can see it saves a lot of, uh, of uh, I don't know, stress I would say because uh, as long as the parameter is in the tunnel, you you know you can retrieve it. You don't need to declare it in all the possible templates. And uh, this way, you yeah, for example, in with the example of section, the, te the template is much is much cleaner. So I think it's both convenient and also reduce the num the content the amount of code you need to write. So that's all for tunnels. The second trick is uh, is getting data from web APIs during your processing. So this is what it looks like. You have uh, the address of the of a service. It's also also called web service. So it looks like this. You and you have parameters and in green and in orange values for these parameters. So these web services or web APIs enable uh, the generation of some. Uh, dynamic content from a database or from a CMS. Here is an example uh, with a DataPen toolkit, very simplified. So you have your normal input for the DataPen toolkit with uh, uh, some input content and during this uh, processing you might need to retrieve some content from a database like uh, information about a product or uh, the address of a specific image and uh, so you would do this using a call uh, this uh, an address similar to this one uh, to a database and the database would retrieve would return some XML content because here we are um, in an XML context uh, that could even take the shape of a data topic like here abc123.data and then you would be able to integrate this uh, uh, to your processing so here is how it looked like in XSLT. You would create a variable, for example, called generated XML that would contain 
uh, the XML generated by the database or the CMS and you would uh, call it by uh, using the document function and pass it passing the URL uh, of this uh, of this web service with the parameters uh, yeah, as the argument in the document function this uh, URL would not be static in your code like hard-coded but the, par the value of the parameters would uh, uh, most probably be dynamic and be come from the content you are processing for example in ant it would be quite similar you would uh, but you would use the get task and uh, store the result in a temporary file and you have the, disc the documentation here okay that was it um, I hope it was useful uh, I hope it was clear and uh, that you will uh, uh, use these tricks to uh, make your development easier uh, so you can follow me in, in Twitter and uh, email me if you have further question on this topic. Thank you very much and uh, happy development.